This is about how the isolation of populations can result in speciation. And speciation is the formation of new species when populations of a species become isolated and evolve differently. In order to understand this, I'm assuming you understand the mechanism of natural selection. Now, isolation could happen in a few different ways. Let's look at one major example. If we look at the map of the world, it's relatively obvious that some continents quite nicely fit together. And if we go back on a scale of tens or hundreds of millions of years, actually, they very much did. There are ancient supercontinents that have now split apart, but these pieces of land were once joined. So if we consider this piece of land here between, um, or part of what we would now consider Africa and South America, we would assume that in modern times, we would be able to find fossils of the same species. And that's true, we can actually do that. We can find in the fossil record that the same species, here labelled species A, did exist on the same piece of land. Obviously, if we jump forward in time, we've now got species B and C in this area. Notice that it's not species B and B. The point being that they don't evolve exactly the same, in exactly the same way. And so the result is different species. We've increased species diversity here. And this happens because there are changes in climate and food supply and predation in each of these different places. And so there are new selection pressures. And those new selection pressures differ from place to place. If you want to learn a little bit more about the structure of the earth through geological history, you could research Pangaea and Gondwana. These are the names of ancient supercontinents. Some methods by which isolation could occur. Firstly, tectonic plate movement. That's the one we've already discussed, whereby the sort of rock patchwork that makes up the earth is being moved around and shifted about. And this is how continents become separated. Another one is mountain range formation, where mountains form in an area and could separate one population into two. Another one would be river formation or movements of rivers into a, a new area or a new place. And another one would be sea level change. Imagine that there's one piece of land, the sea level changes, that forms a piece of ocean between them. Now, obviously, we've got two pieces of land, and so the organisms on them become separated. Another important idea is land bridges. Areas which were once isolated can then become reconnected. A good example is the area around Central America. North and South America weren't always joined through geological history. They were separated, which means the organisms that were in what we now call North America and South America didn't come into contact. When this land bridge was formed, there was obviously the new movement of organisms, which means they were exposed to new food sources. There were new predators. All of this means new selection pressures. And so it creates a new direction for evolution to occur. Ways that you might get assessed on this. Maybe outline how geological activity can result in speciation. First off, the formation of mountains, continental drift, may isolate populations. Basically just give some information about one or several methods by which isolation might occur. So populations may evolve differently because of new selection pressure as a result of, for example, different food sources, climate conditions, these kinds of things. You might also discuss something like predation or something like that. Eventually, the two separate populations may become so different they cannot interbreed and are now separate species. It's always good to give examples if you can, and there are loads of them that you could mention, but one that I've brought up here is that ostriches and emus, these flightless birds, each have a common ancestor. They both evolved from the same one species, and that was on the continent of Gondwana, which existed in the geological past. But now they've evolved into different species. <laughs>